Sports. Hello and welcome to Cleveland Sports Storm, the best place to come for turbulent debates on Cleveland's hottest sports topics at a lightning pace. I'm your host, Karan Swoop, and alongside me are esteemed sports panelists, Joe Vasiloff and John Bond. Joe, what's going on people? Cleveland Sports, it's where it's at. That's right, and you're at the right spot because you're going to watch the professor take the kid to school. Baloney. Ha 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 Let's go straight into the eye of today's sports storm with topic number one. And that is? Topic number one is on Dante Starworth. Went from pricey free agent signing to a virtual no-show on the field last season. Now he's likely headed for prison after a fatal car accident with facing DUI manslaughter charges. Is Starworth the biggest free agent bust of the Browns expansion era? Gonna start with Joe here. I would pretty much immediately say yes, but the one thing that's really holding me back about it was Phil Savage signed him to a ridiculously bad contract. If they would have signed him to a one or a two year deal, I'd be okay with it. Like really, he didn't play that. He played pretty bad last year, was hurt often. They signed him to a seven year deal worth like $30 million. It's a horrible contract. It's a bad deal. And we're gonna have yeah. to eat it. We're gonna have to eat it while he's in jail. Now, if maybe they'll be able to cancel it out because he's going to right. jail. And, and they will. That that there's a clause. We're not gonna eat that whole amount. In but that part time. of it we are. And one of the things that they're talking about right now is he's gonna use part of his bonus to try to get out of this whole situation. Which I don't know if the Browns are able to get that back. But if they do, that would really help in our cap for next year. So we can possibly sign some more pieces so we can build our defense into the way that Mangini wants so it to be. So you in. feel he's the biggest bust we've had since we've started. Is that what you're saying? I'm partially saying that because of the contract, because he was supposedly coming out, he was going to be a great speed receiver, someone we could throw underneath to and open up the field more to give Braylon Edwards last do, double coverage. Do you feel he would have been our dominant receiver? Probably not. No, he's not a dominant okay. receiver. So we didn't, like, hedge everything on him really controlling a big part of the team. We wanted him... As back, uh, to help as, out a little bit. To open up the field more okay. so Braylon wouldn't be double teamed right. more. And Joe Jervis is getting hurt last year, really hurt the Browns because yeah. coming him, he was the go-to guy on third down. He's a guy that you can go to with sure hands who's going to catch the ball. They had to rely on Stallworth and Braylon to catch passes. Okay. The past two years, Braylon's been in the top five in drops. And last year, he led the league in drops. Okay. He just drops the ball. All we right. need so, someone with sure so hands. So you, you gave it your shot, in other words. Let, let me give you my shot. Can anyone... <laughs> Of course, he might have been in his diapers when this kid was uh, growing up, but okay. there, were, there was a, a fella that was a pro bowler with uh, New Orleans. Uh, he came from Ohio State, and he went to high school here locally. We spent $36 million, $36 million in contract to LeCharles Bentley. His first day in practice, he turned around, and his fat ass broke his knee in half. Okay? We got rid of a number one pick. That was our center that was going to anchor our line. We got rid of him. He was a great guy. He was actually a comm major, film major. I don't know if you knew that. No. But anyways, we were banking that whole line on this guy, a pro bowler. We spent a ton of money, and I really feel we never recovered out of that, that we actually were building a team around a free agent. And I consider that a bust because we got nothing out of it. And he tried. He tried real hard to rehab. He's a great guy. He stayed in the area. But I think as far as the Browns I really think, losing I don't think that's a bust because they did restructure his contract at the end. They restructured his contract. He only got in the hundreds of thousands. He wasn't getting millions of dollars towards the end of that but deal. But what did we get they out of it? But him. what did that do to our team? It locked us up for two years. It, it, it didn't really lock that, us up. We got, we got, we got line Hank Fraley. For two years. We got Hank Fraley out of that. He anchors our offensive line. We got Hank Fraley oh, out of that situation. Because he hey, he's a big anchor. That's Sorry, about I'm going to have to cut you off right now because we have to actually move on to topic number two. The Cavs have the best record in franchise history and are dominating the NBA this year. The question now becomes, who's really responsible for this success? Is it Coach Mike Brown, the brains behind this operation, or is it really King James? John, we're going to start with you on this topic. Well, you know, LeBron is the most dominant man in all of sports right now. Yeah, so we I have agree. to be there because of him. Uh, but I, you have to give something to this coach that actually made this team play defense. And if we're actually going to make it to the promised land, we're going to make it through defense. Whether LeBron dominates the series or not, the rest of the team has to play defense. And LeBron may actually turn into being <coughs> one of the best defensive players of this year. They say he might win that, which would be kind of interesting. So LeBron obviously is multidimensional, and he does it. But I think our coach is very unsung, 
And I think if another team had LeBron, would they be winning it like we are? Now, I don't know. Is our coach better than most other coaches? I, I wanna, think he is. I, I want to give our coach propers, but LeBron is the difference of us making it. But our coach is a great coach. Coach and, Mike, Mike Brown is trying to teach the defensive aspect of basketball. He's trying to teach yeah. a team aspect. Right. He's shortcomings his offense. He hired John it was John S. I forget his last name. He's from North Carolina. He hired him to basically be an offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. He's the reason the Cavs are really thriving on offense this year because he's game planning for the team. I don't think that this year's success is all LeBron. I think it's mostly Mo Williams. Mo Williams really gelled this team together. He's a point guard that's pushing difference. the ball, and he's a difference maker. Yeah. He's upped his defense. He hasn't right. been injured. He's missed right. an, on average 20 games a year over his career. This year, Played every single game. Yeah, I really like him. Mike Brown's Coach of the Year candidate because he's a great coach. He's out there. He's teaching team defense. How many pairs of glasses do you think he has? Forty-two pairs of glasses. Forty-two pairs. He has <laughs> in rotation with his clothes. So we really can't say that one person's really making this team or the coach. You're agreeing on that. LeBron's a coach on the floor. Mike Brown has the authority in the locker room. Right. He really defines every player's roles. There's no arguments. Right. There's no disputes about right. what each player has to do on the court. They know what they're doing. They know what their role is, and they accept it. The team is winning because they're playing team basketball right. centered around LeBron, Sojournis, and Mo Williams. Mo Williams is the reason the Cavs are winning right now. So should Mike Brown get coach of the year? Mike Brown should get coach of the year because he's – going to possibly be the sixth coach in the NBA history to be to have his team have the best record in the NBA and win coach of the year. He'd be the sixth person to do it. I think he deserves it because he took a team that won only 45 games last year and we're up into the high season. Even if you have another coach running your offense, this is not football, it is basketball. Just be, He's got a guy running his offense for him because he doesn't, he's not an offensive coach. He's a defensive coach. He's coaching the defense. He's teaching team aspect. He's got a guy running his offense for him, but he's making all the calls. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the important thing is he's kept the team chemistry. This is the loosest team I've ever seen in sports. They're actually getting a little ridiculous with the rock and roll shit at the end of the games and all that. <laughs> but I believe the coach has set the tone with that. He lets them be themselves. And I don't think we'd be on a championship season unless we had this coach. Because I think LeBron could go to another team and not make it a championship team. I really, uh, I really right. like LeBron.